Welcome to the Warley Motor Railway Club virtual event featuring Club Life, the exhibition and the exhibitors. We hope you enjoy this present. Hello and welcome to our section of this amazing virtual model railway event. I'm Justin. And I'm Sam from Scale Model Scenery. So over the next few minutes, we're just going to discuss what's, what's happened over the last 12 months, the big changes within the company. We're going to look at some of our new kits that you can see here. And also we've got a new release that we're also going to show you. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. So quite a lot's happened over the last 12 months of scale model scenery. Can you bring us up to speed in major developments and the move and that sort of thing? Yeah, well the main thing is I suppose, yeah, we've, we've relocated. A lot's been going on behind the scenes and it's been really hectic. And I know I say every week it's been hectic, but the last 12 months has just been a complete blur. I sat down last night to try and work out what I was going to say today and thinking about the kits we'd built or we created over the last 12 months, I can't remember any of the work we did before we moved. I just no idea where we got to, but we've achieved quite a lot of things. I know that. So, and so new H new HQ then. So that's the, that's the biggest major yeah, thing that we've had definitely. over the past twelve months. So. Yeah, the, the biggest thing we've we've moved. Everybody that's been um, following us over the past few years knows how much I, or for how long I've been banging on about moving down to Cornwall, and we've pulled it off. How we managed to do it, I don't know, but we did it. We're here. Um, we have a nice big workspace. Yeah. Um, it's way bigger than we had before, at least five times the size. Um, looking at it now, I've no idea how we managed in the previous place. It just, just wasn't possible. But yeah, we, we've, we've managed to achieve some pretty amazing things, I think, in the last God. 12 months. Well, I'm obviously, I'm glad that you've moved down because it's gave me the opportunity within the industry. Um, we've also taken on a few more members of staff since I started in July. Yeah. So we're heading in the right direction. We seem to be growing. We're getting more and more kits coming out we've yeah. got a new laser on on the go now so um yeah. hopefully we can keep supplying yeah. i think on that note we'll um perhaps move on to some of the kits yeah. okay so let's take a look at some of our latest releases um we've been really busy since we moved down here in july didn't quite realize how many kits we've released but there's quite a few um and quite a lot of them i've not even got out the drawers tonight so just picked some of the more popular ones and the ones i quite like myself um Lobster pots, for example, as we live by the seaside, I couldn't resist modelling these. Ideal for detailing your uh, harbour scenes and quaysides, that kind of thing. Um, we see these most days when we're walking the dog and stuff like that, so I thought, got to have a go at modelling them. Didn't know whether I could pull them off or not because of the, uh, the fineness of the, or the, the, the intricacy of the, of the mesh, um, but we managed to do it. So they're actually not a bad kit to build. Right, so that's the lobster pots. Uh, what else have we done recently? Um, these are being released this weekend. They are LX370 um, chain railings. I mentioned them in a video last week uh, on, on our own uh, Facebook, well, what's it, live, on, live at 5, or live at 4.45 on Friday, um, showing these. These have been released, released this weekend. So that's LX370 and LX371. Um, Dylan, who does quite a lot of design work for us now and also helps with customer service side of things, he's been busy Hello Lola. Um, he's been busy working on a number of things for us. We did the TPWS grids. Uh, we've got two different sizes of these. They're proving very popular with modern image modelers and work great with some of the other trackside details that you'll see on some of Sam's dioramas in a minute. Um, we have loads of detailing bits. As you know, we're quite, um, quite well known for detailing things and little, little kits that you can just add the finishing touch to your, to your, to your layout. Loads of bits like rivet strips, all that kind of stuff, which work on bridges, water tanks, um, all those kind of projects. We even found a way to do net curtains. Um, we can print these onto clear acetate now and give a net curtain effect so you can add those to your um, buildings from other manufacturers, not just ours. Uh, so they're really easy to use, just trim them to shape, glue them behind your existing windows or use, use the glazing sheet to replace existing windows. Um, so that's net curtains. Uh, customer called Steve was asking me, shall I say, for years to do these. Um, locomotive roster boards, these appear in engine sheds and things like that. Um, we've got one for all of the major regions and a BR version, which is this version. Basically shows, uh, has a list of the engines that are, um, what's the word, 
stored, for want of a better word, there is a name for it, but I can't be on shed or whatever you want to call it, uh, where the locos are based, and it will show you what loco is running uh, on a particular day and that kind of thing. So those are ideal for detailing steam sheds. We have um, cable drums. Oh, cable drums, yeah. Cable well, drums I and, like those, and yeah. Great. Cable drums and folding roadworks barriers, which are on there. Um, they're the type of barriers that you see um, BT engineers, open reach engineers, gas engineers, that kind of thing, using at roadworks. And the cable drums are ideal for putting next to them just as a little extra detail. You can also, if you really wish, add some fine fishing line or something on, onto the onto the reel, onto the cable drums to add a little bit of extra detail. Um, we've expanded our range of ghost signs, these are peeling stick ghost signs. We do, we've got four in the range now with lots more to come. We've got Bass Breweries, Ellipton's Tea, uh, Ansel's Beer, and we've also got that one which I have no idea how to pronounce. It could be Vox, it could be Vo, who knows. Please, if you know how to pronounce it, please tell us because we don't know. Um, we just know how it's spelt. Um, but these are really easy to use, simple peel and stick. Um, Roger asked us the other weekend, he was trying to peel up Martin, couldn't, we were fighting with the backing on these. Quick tip, if you bend the corner of these over, very corner, and bend it back again, the backing will just peel off and you can remove it really easy. They stick onto any card building, uh, card or paper building, as long as it's a flat surface, they'll stick. Um, they're completely transparent, other than the printing, so whatever texture is behind brick or uh, stone or whatever will show through. Um, what else have we got? Manholes, I've been wanting to do these for years since we did the printed version. Dylan finally got around to drawing these for me, or I finally got around to asking Dylan to draw these for me this year. Um, so these have been done. These have um, laser engraved detail on them. So quick coat of dark brown or a similar sort of cast iron kind of paint color. Uh, cut them out, stick them on your roads, job done. So that's those, that's LX350 um, manholes. We do those in a couple of gauges as well, is that right? Doing them in yeah, N and the uh, and we do them in as N well? N and o. Yeah. I was amazed we managed to do them in N, but yeah. they do work in they N. They do look they're, really good in They're N, tiny, they? but they work, so we've got those in N. Um, there's a few other things on here that we want to do in N. We will be doing the um, ghost signs in N very shortly. I've just got to resize them and get them, but they'll, they'll work, the idea will work. You've just got to get them done, we will do. Um, what else? A couple of things that Sam will talk about in a minute. Shops, Sam hates these, absolutely Shops. hates them. Okay. Uh, we end, we've ended up, we started off creating what was originally going to be one or two mix and match shops. We've ended up with what will eventually be a range of about six shop fronts and probably six buildings that go with them. And at the moment, this is the first variation, but this has 26 choices of yeah. different shop types. That's right, so there's a whole alphabet in the, in the file for me to go through and every to, time we put a kit together. And to be honest, I realised the other day we've actually missed quite a few shops, because I right. didn't think there was 26 shops, but there's probably another five or six that we haven't done. We haven't even got a laundrette and things like that. You know, they're they're great things. though, because if you, you can put them all in a, in a line and you can build you know, a complete high street really, all, all from one, one range, so Absolutely. they are really good. They're just. Um, quite hard to manufacture, a lot of work goes into them, making sure they've got all the right signs and stuff. As you can see, all the detail on them, have all got their own individual glazing, their own company names on there. The window, you get two types of windows as well, so depending if you want to wrap the building first, the windows you put in will be slightly narrow, narrower to uh, get, get in between the, the wraps. If you want to leave it like this and maybe you could render it perhaps, we were yeah. thinking, render it, yeah. putting some filler on, yeah. then you would use these windows because they fit into a bigger gap because the wrap isn't there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the textures, that we, we include some textures with these kits, but you, uh, the textures that's with them, uh, and we also have a range of, I don't know, 50, 60 other different textures which you can download from the Railway Modellers Club, which is the club that Ian looks after for us. Um, he's been uploading loads more stuff over the last few months. There's lots of containers and... Uh, textures, one or two other kits, we've put the airfield kits in there and things like that, so Ian's been taking care of all that for us. Um, but yeah, 26 different uh, shops so far, with another five different buildings and five different variations on the shop fronts, and numerous other things we're going to throw into the mix to make it we've all... We've got a bike shop, but it'd be nice oh, yeah. to see a, a BMX shop, or perhaps even a motocross yep. shop. So, oh, um, absolutely, why not? I, I'm adding to the list now, yeah. so I'm my own worst enemy. I why not? We'll leave it at that. Why not? Um, we've got the 368 as well there, haven't we? Yes. Is, uh, this, this week, or was that last, last, was that that last was week's? Last week, last released week's that last kit. week. This is the LX368 locomotive maintenance uh, platform. Um, 
looks quite a complex kit but it's not as bad as it looks to be honest it's quite uh, straightforward to build um, this is ideal for use in 1960s depots onwards there's probably still some around to present day in some of the older depots um, it's a concrete platform or concrete effect platform we've got a weathered paper concrete texture on there with white lining around the edges um, underneath you've got a 2 mil MDF base uh, we've got holes in the top of each of the legs so you can run pipes through or pieces of wire effectively but to simulate pipes and conduit and that kind of thing these would probably be used and I'm guessing now so please correct me if you know more about these than I do I think as far as I'm concerned they are electrical conduit hyd possibly hydraulic pipes and air and things like that to give the so that whoever's working on the locomotives has everything they need basically to get on with and do their job um, so it would be that kind of thing that's my understanding of it but correct me if I'm wrong um, and then at the end you've got a variation on our LX248 platform steps we've modified them slightly to fit with this kit um, these have even got well, you can see that fine tread plate detail on all the steps as well so it's engraved on there um, these aren't as bad to build as they look you glue the sides into the into the end of the uh, maintenance platform then put each of the treads in one at a time little drop of glue underneath on each of the treads job done pretty straightforward and then you add the railings in so that's the LX368 uh, nice versatile kit we've got a second version of this which has different feet on the bottom uh, and then we have um, a steel version as well with an engraved um, tread plate top on it okay so that's me about done I think that's the LX368 I think I've covered everything else I wanted to cover I'm going to hand over to Sam now, who's going to talk to you about some of his amazing dioramas he's been building. Thank you. Right, so first of all then, we'll just have a look at some of the new kits on here, but we've also got some of the classics on here as well. We'll move on to those in a bit. So first of all, we'll start with the skate park. This was a bit of a crazy idea of mine really, I suppose, wasn't it? Just I to like see, it. see if we could do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we put a kit together. As you can see, we've just tried to showcase some of our existing kits, so the 006 the LX55 at the back. We've got some of our 3D printing stuff on here as well. We decided we liked it and it was very prototypical for anything sort of from the 2000 onwards. There's a lot of skate parks, uh, you know, it's in, in waste ground on sidings yeah. or terminus yeah. stations, you might see skate parks there. So we figured it might be something different to your allotments or your low relief shops, something like that. We just thought if you wanted to be different and we tried to be prototypical, that's what we come up with just to give you a bit of an idea of what you could get on your layout, as you can see the track on the back. So we simplified the kit to make it KX58. And as you can see, we've gone with a metal wrap for this one, which is a little bit more modern, but we felt that it was just a little bit cleaner than the concrete. Yeah. This kit also comes with a graffiti wrap. So I think that was one of the first things we got in the feedback, wasn't it? A lot yeah. of people were saying, really it needs graffiti on it because unfortunately they are covered in graffiti yeah. aren't they so you do get a choice with this you can put this clean wrap on or you can put the graffiti wrap on or you can probably mix and match them if you, if yeah. you cut them and yeah. chop them up you can just put some certain tags on there if you like yep. so that's the first kit that i've spoke about so the next kits we've probably got the anderson shouters we'll yeah, talk Jeff about anderson. these these yeah. are quite how did these come about again can you remind me uh, my hairbrained idea for making corrugated Iron effect laser board. Out of laser board. That yeah. was right, wasn't it? So we've got we've got a little roller together, haven't we? Yeah. And we've successfully managed to achieve that, as you can see. So we thought we'd do again, just do a diorama, just to try and showcase the kits really, so you can imagine what they would look like once they're on your layout. Obviously, the Anderson shelter, to be more prototypical, would be covered in soil because this isn't going to protect you much from no. German bombers as it is. But the idea is just so you can see the kit. We've also got the tools on here that Justin briefly mentioned earlier, the LX361. So we've just painted some up and we've put them on this diorama. Again, just to give you an idea of what you can do with them. We've also got the railway sleepers on here that we've used as little retainers. And we've also got the push bikes we do, which is the LX041. And talking about push bikes, we do do the BMXs as well, which you can see here on the skate park. Don't ask me what the kit number is because I can't remember. No, I'm not sure what the kit number is, <laughs> but we do remember. do BMX. If you search BMXs on our website, I'm sure you'll come across some. So we'll talk about the barn next as well. So this has been a very successful kit really, hasn't it? A yeah. Lot, a lot of people have um, that, that was enjoyed your, this. That's the, the first 
influence you had over what we did that's here that's correct. Modern scenery. That's I think correct, that's isn't it? Put, yeah. So well, yeah, I'm not really sure how this came about. I suppose it's more down to my own modelling and my own layout, Peaks 47, which is based in the Peak District. And these are very common sites in Derbyshire and around the Peak District. So when I went up to visit the place to get some inspiration, I figured I had to have one of these barns on my layout. So I had to go at scratch building one and it got quite a good response, didn't yeah. it? And a, yeah. a few people said, do you think work could put a kit together? And we thought, hey, you know what, we'll have a go, See won't we? Happens, Why yeah. not? We're always up for a challenge, aren't we? Yeah. So we quickly knocked this up as a, this was the second prototype, I think, now, wasn't yeah, it? Second one, yeah, second one. So we just went a little bit wider to give it a bit more of a, a bit of a squat look, which we figured just seemed to be a bit more prototypical. Justin's made a fantastic job as the wrap, if you want to have a closer look at it. And this was just taken from the rail over road bridge just down the road, wasn't it? Yeah, just so on the way on, up on the way home, it was just literally Laddick. take yeah. a couple of pictures with the mobile, and then you did your thing, didn't you, with the airbrushing and, and joining them. them and out for an hour or two, yeah. Hey presto, yeah. there came KX057. So you can have this so the barn is with tiles are missing, so it's really derelict, or you can go with a pristine style. I guess this is sort of in between the yeah. two, really, isn't it? Yeah. I quite like them when they're totally derelict and you've got the trees coming out, coming out the top of them and they're really run down. So that's a great kit. Really like that one. So moving on to the diorama quickly. This is the most recent diorama that we've done. And again, this is just to try and showcase some of our kits that we've currently got up for sale. Some of them on here, like I was saying earlier, are the classics. So we've got the Alex 035, the cable trunking. This does really well. We, we make this yeah. week in, week out, don't yeah. we? It's a great yeah. kit. I was um, a little bit frightened of putting that one together to begin with. It looked quite daunting, but actually it's a really easy kit to put together. And if you just work methodically, you can make some good runs of this quite mm. quickly over a course of yeah. an evening. Yeah. So we've also got the catch bits on here. These sell quite well as well. I've added some more modern image stuff on here. And then obviously we've got the Alex 006, which is the same as on the skate park. And we've got the Alex 001, which is the five bar gate that goes with it. Complete with baler twine holding the gate shut. That's correct. Which and that is, is incredibly prototypical. Bit, that's yeah. just a little bit of um, fishing <laughs> yeah. braid. It's not fishing yeah. line, it's just yeah. the braid, braid. And I've just yeah. painted it orange. Yeah. And it just finishes off nicely. Yeah. So you can see that build on our YouTube channel. And that's the idea really of these dioramas. We're going to film them, give you a bit of an idea of how to put them together. A little bit of a tutorial. I'm sure you guys can make a much better job of this, but just gives you a bit of inspiration, a bit of idea of what the kits actually look like yeah. when they're on the board. Yeah. You're planning a new one as well, aren't you? Yes, I'm planning a new diorama here, which our new release, which I'm about to show you, will go on. So here we go. Ta da! Here is our new release, which is KX059, 59, is that right? Yeah. And as you can see, it's a humpback bridge. This again has got the textured wrap on it. And the inspiration from this, I believe, was, is, is quite locally. Do you yeah, want to just tell us the, about that? Yeah, it's a that? bridge we walk over every morning when we go and walk Lola at Pentewin. Um, it's based on a, I guess, fairly standard humpback bridge design, certainly popular down here anyway. But they're, they're all over the place, Derbyshire, uh, Dartmoor, where else? Please do D. All over the place they are. They're probably in the Scottish Islands as well. It's a standard stone bridge, um, pretty... So we use the word standard again, but it's a common design, I would have said. Um, what we've done is, this, this is actually made from MDF. All of this is made from MDF, um, wrapped in paper. Uh, and it's, I'll say incredibly simple, but it is really, really simple. This took me less than an hour to build, and that was with photographing it ready for writing the instructions. So it's, for, the, for an experienced modeler, it's probably 45 minutes, I would have said, to yeah, build it at the yeah. most. At the it's most. a it's kit really you can build, sort of after tea in yeah, the evening yeah. which is great it's really straightforward it's really easy to achieve these curves they're built into the kit um, when you assemble it you'll see just how we've done it it allows you to get the curved bed or road bed on the bridge you've got the curved sides as well if you can just about see that there so you've got a nice nicely shaped bridge um, which will work on any layout that's got a country lane or a little bit of a rural scene the nice thing we were discussing this this morning this will work with anything from the turn of the last century, right, well, the last one, yeah, right yeah, 1901 yeah. onwards, or 1900 onwards, right up to present day. Because um, say we still walk over this, over one of these, every single day. Um, I really like the coping on it. I think we've done a really good job of that coping. I must admit, that's turned out way better than I thought it would. Um, Which is the sandstone coping, is that right, on the Alex 354, but instead we've just ran it on card instead yes, of laser board. Yeah, which gives it more of a sootier 
much more weathered effect. I mean, that is, that's straight out of the packet. I haven't done anything to that to finish it, and I think that looks fairly uh, just like the ones down the road, really. Um, the textured wrap road looks particularly good as well. I was really impressed with that, how good that's came out just as a wrap. I really, really like this kit. I like it more than the barn. This is probably, <laughs> for me, this is the fav my favourite kit yeah. in the range. I yeah. really, really like it. So yeah. that takes me on to the next YouTube video. We're going to do a little diorama that's going to incorporate mainly this as the centrepiece. But we're going to put a few more kits on there just to showcase them, really. So I've drawn a plan so far. I thought I'd just show it you now. These are the kits that we are planning on putting on. So we've got the AX006, which is our red and white warning tape. Yep. I'm going to leave it at that so that you can have a think about where I'm planning on using that. We possibly <coughs> might put the KX006 on it, which is a Victorian wall. We've got the Alex 002, which is the different style five bar gate. Yeah. And you're going to use the Alex 006 as well. And also we're going to use AX106. So for, for those of you that don't know that, it's the bright orange cable trunk and it runs mm -hmm. under the lines. There isn't going to be any line, any rails on this. So I'll leave that one with you. It's have, not a modern image either. Have a bit of a guess of what you think we may be doing with that. The bridge will go in the centre. We'll probably have a go at doing some water scene on it as well. So that's that will be up all being well on the YouTube channel in well whenever Justin lets me just play <laughs> modelling really. So maybe <laughs> over a month, the next over the next six weeks. Yeah. Over the, yeah, over the next six weeks, definitely. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot going on here over the next week or two. So it'll be something um, like that will be hopefully yeah. the final finish with some static yeah, grass on there. Very three D and very uh, yeah dynamic. I think it'll look pretty smart. So yeah, so that's that's the that's the KX fifty nine. That's our big release for this weekend with the uh, for the show weekend. That's available to order now on the website. So KX fifty nine dash double O. Um, I think it will work on quite a lot of you layouts and there's a lot of you building sort of rural scenes and that kind of thing so I think it'll be quite popular hopefully anyway fingers crossed but we've enjoyed building it that's the main thing it's I've enjoyed di designing it it's Sam's been good fun hasn't it yeah. just watching it develop yeah really yeah. seem to throw ideas off each other and yeah. things tend well to happen that. almost by mistake don't they these coping, oh, yeah. we wasn't yeah. sure how to do the coping stones no. I put flat ones on and uh, management didn't like them you weren't too keen and <laughs> Um, so we thought we had to come up with something better, and then, we had, then Sam had a brainwave, why don't we do the sandstone ones? And it's worked a treat. Yep. So yeah, so that's that. So that's pretty much everything, I think, isn't it, for today? It's what we've got coming out at the minute with what we've got coming up on the YouTube channel. Yeah. That's about it, and yeah. so thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the show. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>